Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this series, our next topic is the self and related concepts. When we are talking about self and related concepts, let us first revisit about a humanistic perspective, self theory, where Carl Rogers discuss about different type of selves, the ideal self, self image and the true self we discussed in the last classes. The ideal self is the person you would like to be, self image the person you think you are and the true self the person you actually are. Then next point which we discussed over there was incongruence among these three or congruence among these three. If these three are mismatched then we may have some problems. On the other hand if these three are matched with each other then we would be having characteristics of a fully functioning person. So, if it is mismatched or incongruence, then we may have problem with our self esteem as well as we may high level of anxiety and defense mechanisms. Self esteem suffers when there is a large difference between one's ideal self and self image. On the other hand, if self image does not match with the true self, then we have high level of anxiety and defensiveness or can say broadly high level of neuroticisms or high level of anxiety, stress and tension and this is the cause of abnormal behavior as per this theory. So, that is very important to know how we may have low level of self esteem as well as anxiety and defensiveness. On the other hand, if we have good level of congruence, then there is positive for us and we have high level of positive self as well as we would be having characteristics of a fully functioning person. Let us understand this concept a little bit more. The self concept is the sum total of a person's beliefs about their own personal attributes. So, totality about you, what do you think about yourself, what are your cognition, what are your emotions, what kind of behavior you perceive for yourself. So, these beliefs can be about your affect about your behavior, about your cognitions, about your motivations etcetera. It means what kind of emotions you think you have, what kind of behavior as well as cognitive processes like thinking, reasoning, problem solving etcetera, motivation level in which direction you think about it. So, totality about affect, behavior, cognitions, motives etcetera is your self concept. Sometimes evaluation of these beliefs is considered part of the self concept that is self esteem. So, if we say evaluation it means how do you evaluate yourself positively or negatively. If you evaluate yourself positively then you have positive self concept as well as high level of self esteem. On the other hand if you evaluate yourself negatively then you may have negative self concept as well as lower level of self esteem. Self esteem means self worth or personal value, how do you perceive that is your perception in fact about yourself. Self esteem should be viewed as a continuum and can be high, medium or low and is often quantified as a number in empirical research. This point will be discussed in detail in next slides. Who am I? the self is and then we focus on various aspects of self. For example, self concept, who am I? That is the answer. Self knowledge, how can I explain and predict myself? That is part of self. Self esteem, my sense of self worth, that is self and social self, my role as a student, family member, friend or my group identity. So, all these are in fact perceived roles what do you think, what kind of student you are, what kind of family member you are, do you have positive 
evaluation about yourself when you are thinking about friendship as well as group identity whichever groups you have in these groups what is your role is it valuable enough and you perceive it positively so if you perceive it positively then that is positive social self we can say so self means it has various dimensions dimensions may be some more as well as self concept self knowledge self esteem social self etc and this totality is your self then next point is there are various other aspects which are addressing self concept i think now you can easily understand individualistic versus collectivistic cultures which i discussed number of times in previous lectures in individualistic cultures we have independent view of self on the other hand in collectivistic cultures it has been observed that we have interdependent view of self interdependent view of self means when you are thinking about yourself your relations and role of other people is part of yourself for example mother father sibling coworker friend so all are part of yourself on the other hand in individualistic culture it has been observed that broadly we have independent view of self you have yourself as well as you know your relations give importance to these relations but these relations are not part of yourself this is difference between independent view of self and interdependent view of self next point is collectivistic and individualistic cultures really important for us to understand how they define self so when we talk about culture wise about self then we can say that collectivistic culture people are protected in exchange for loyalty so in this group extended families are important rather uh, your immediate family immediate family means you your uh, brother sister and parents extended family we can say community we can say bigger group we can say uh, part of a society or culture or community in this group identity is based in the social system and given by one's group as well as emotional dependency is there group membership is promoted in uh, collectivistic culture expertise order duty security are provided by the larger system trust is placed in group decisions on the other hand when we talk about individualistic culture and our role as a self in individualistic culture everybody is supposed to take care of himself or herself so you have individuality and that's your responsibility to take care of you as well as uh, you may have relationship with your immediate family identity is based on the individuality inner attributes of the self are promoted in uh, individualistic culture emotional independence is there individuals initiatives achievements and leadership qualities are emphasized in individualistic culture trust is placed in individual decisions so these are the differences between collectivistic and individualistic cultures and that's why we have influence of culture on self now for understanding self next point is what is positive self concept it could be negative self concept but being positive psychology our focus is on more positive aspects of human personality so that's why we will be talking about positive self concept the mental picture that someone has of themselves whether it is positive or negative is self concept and our objective here is to explore positive self concept parents and teachers play the biggest role in creating and maintaining positive self concepts in children the environment of a child also plays a crucial role in the way they view themselves and this fact will be discussed in detail in resilience chapter by eric erickson's theory the strengths and weaknesses that are learned as a child are internalized as concepts and affect the way one acts later so all these theories are saying that uh, childhood experiences are very important and they are giving due respect or due weightage to psychoanalysis and psychodynamic uh, scholars who have focused on childhood experiences and they observed that all these intrapersonal character strengths develop through different uh, developmental stages and this fact will be discussed in detail in resilience chapter with the support of eric erickson theory and some other theories so broadly here message is uh, we have two selves actual self which is real one and ideal self what kind of 
self we want to have. If there is congruence or match between two actual and uh, you know ideal self, then we do not have any problem. On the other hand, if we have much difference between two and incongruence or mismatched between actual self and ideal self, then we may have negative self. On the other hand, in this case, we would be having positive self. Now, next point is social construction of self-esteem. Habit 1998 concludes that self-esteem reflects the emotions flowing from persons appraisals of their overall effectiveness in the conduct of their lives. So, overall appraisal or evaluation is important and again I am repeating whether it is in positive or negative direction that matters. Self esteem is the personal judgment of worthiness. What do you think? What kind of person you are? Do you perceive yourself positively or you perceive yourself negatively? So, that is your self esteem. The contemporary psychological understanding of self-esteem is rooted in four ideas. Number one, acceptance. Do you accept yourself or you do not accept yourself or have certain problems? Second is evaluation. How do you evaluate yourself? Evaluate yourself positively or negatively? Next is comparison. Most of the time when we evaluate ourselves, we compare ourselves with others. So, if in this comparison we observe we are at higher front, then that is positive one. On the other hand, when we compare and find we are lower than others, then we may have low level of self-esteem. Similarly, self-efficacy is important, which will be discussed in detail. Self-efficacy means your attitude toward the work, I can do that. Self-esteem is an objectively real fact of human existence. It is built early on a foundation of security, trust and unconditional love. So, again it is supporting Eric Erikson's theory. So, because again and again we are talking about this theory, let us know overall view of this theory and we will discuss this theory in detail in resilience chapter. This Eric Erikson's ego psychology is based on certain points. In this theory, he has mentioned that we have crisis at each and every stage of our life. And he has identified several stages from childhood to adulthood. So, in all these stages, we have certain crisis. Crisis means an important turning point and during this crisis, how it is resolved that is very important. There are two possible ways. One possible way is positive resolution and second one is negative resolution. If we have positive resolution, it means we will be strengthening the ego and therefore, a greater adaptation. On the other hand, if we resolve this crisis negatively in our life or at this particular stage, then uh, to weaken the ego and inhibits adaptation. So, as per this theory, we have various crises one by one, stage by stage. There are two options to resolve these crises one positive, another negative resolution. Positive resolution will increase our adaptation or greater adaptation we would be having during next stages. On the other hand, if we resolve it negatively and resolve it positively or in positive direction, then to weaken the ego and inhibits adaptation. So, after that our adaptation would be reducing. In each stage for a crisis, there are three stages immature phase, critical phase and resolution phase. Immature phase when we are just entering in this stage, critical phase where we are resolving it and third is the end of this stage where we are just have resolution phase. He has mentioned that the psychosocial stages are determined by heredity as well as social environment and he has given significant weightage to social environment. So, if we resolve these crises positively, then we would be adding one virtue in our personality. Virtue means when the crisis characterizing a stage is positively resolved, a virtue emerged in one's personality. And these identified virtues are hope, willpower, purpose, competence, uh, fidelity, love, 
care and wisdom. So, these are the ways to develop certain virtues in our personality. So, you just see at first stage we develop hope in our personality. Uh, this theory will be discussed in detail once again in resilience chapter and more clarity than you will have about this theory. Now again let us know a little bit more about self esteem. Self esteem is enhanced when the person is able to make favorable comparison with other people or with an ideal self. So, it means both are important when you compare with others you have favorable comparison. And second one is your real self and your ideal self are quite close to each other and it is enhanced when the person acts effectively in his or her physical or social environment. So, whenever you are doing effective work in your social and physical environment you are getting positive feedback and that is why have higher level of self esteem. When we discuss about comparison then uh, it is just like you for example, you are standing here and when you compare yourself with this person you feel better. On the other hand when you compare yourself with this person you feel lower. For example, you got 70 percent marks you will feel happy or high level of self esteem when you are meeting another person who has 50 percent marks. On the other hand when you are talking with a person who had 90 percent you may feel low. So, that way we compare ourselves with others we feel high or low self esteem. When I, we talk about self esteem then we have various questions and answers are in terms of self esteem. For example, am I a person of good standing in my family, peer group, community or in profession? If you think yes you are then high level of self esteem on the other hand may have low level of self esteem. Am I a worthy person? How do I compare with others? Am I effective in my work or in my family life? So, if you have positive evaluation then positive or high level of self esteem. On the other hand if your answers are in no then you may have low level of self esteem. The individual should ideally be able to experience and manifest feeling of worth, value and positive self images. Then you have high level of self esteem. Therefore, self esteem drives from the social world that surrounds the individual and so the collectivity, the family, the peer group, the school is obliged to treat its members in a ways that will enhance their self esteem. So, it means not only you, but your social environment should be supportive. In your social environment, your parents, your teachers, your school, your friends should be supportive then only you will have positive self esteem. In last classes I have been talking about some psychological tests. Here let us experience what do we do in psychological tests. So, that you can understand about psychological test, its administration and uh, what kind of psychological test we have to assess hope, optimism or here in example self esteem. I have selected the scale Rosenberg self esteem scale. First of all, there are standardized instructions in all the psychological tests. For example, in this scale instructions are below is a list of statements dealing with your general feelings about yourself. Please indicate how strongly you agree or disagree with each statement. I will request just take a paper and pen and answer these questions so that you can understand how do we administer psychological test, how do we do scoring, what is difference between raw data and score data and finally, how do we get result in terms of numbers and then we can say a person's level of say self esteem or optimism or hope in other chapters. So, in this psychological test this scale is uh, 1 to 4, 1 to 4 means strongly agree 4, agree uh, 3, disagree 2, strongly disagree 1. So, it means if your answer is strongly agree then you mark 4, if it is agree then you mark 3, if you disagree then mark 2 and strongly disagree mark 1. Let me read these statements one by one and you write your answer of each question. First statement is on the whole 
I am satisfied with myself. So, whatever is your response, you just write that number. Second is, at times I think I am no good at all. Third question is, I feel that I have a number of good qualities. <clears throat> Fourth question is, I am able to do things as well as most other people. Fifth one, I feel I do not have much to be proud of. Then sixth is, I certainly feel useless at times. Seventh, I feel that I am a person of worth at least on an equal plane with others. Eighth question is, I wish I could have more respect for myself. Ninth, all in all, I am inclined to feel that I am a failure. Tenth, I take a positive attitude toward myself. Now, after completion of this administration, let us know about scoring. You must have observed that some statements seems negative. So, negative statement in this psychological test are number 2, number 5, number 6, number 8, 9 and all these statements would be having reversed scoring. So, for positive, strongly disagree 1, disagree 2, agree 3, strongly agree 4. On the other hand, for reversed item, so first score will be our raw score. Then second step is let us convert this raw score in scored score. When I am saying scored score, then you have to do scoring as per negative as well as positive items. For negative items, here scoring is strongly disagree means 4, disagree means 3, uh, agree means 2 and strongly agree means 1. So, after doing that rescoring or reverse scoring, then add all the scores. In this psychological test, higher scores indicate higher self-esteem. So, that score is level of your self-esteem and in this scale, range will be 10 to 40 and uh, it has been observed in one of the studies when I was trying to search some norms, I could not get exact norms for the psychological test, but in one study, I observed that 21 or less than this is counted as very poor self-esteem. So, this is the way to use psychological test and uh, you must have observed two, three things here. At very initial point, we convert your behavior in numbers and then in psychological test, we do statistical analysis with these numbers and then we could say what is your level and uh, correlation with other constructs. So, like in this case, if we have some more psychological test, we can study correlation among the variables. For example, correlation between maybe self-esteem and self-efficacy or maybe self-esteem and personality. So, by having other psychological test, we may collect data from various psychological test and then we could do statistical analysis as per our research plan. Generally, after administration, we have norms and we compare individuals data with these norms and as per these norms, we say whether you have high level of self-esteem, low level of self-esteem or moderate level of self-esteem. And this way, we are able to assess someone's self-esteem, same procedure we follow for other psychological tests. In this series, our next concept is self-efficacy. Self-efficacy means I think I can. How efficient you think you are to do a particular task? The basic premise of self-efficacy theory is about people's beliefs in their capability to produce desired effects by their own actions. Similarly, Maddox in 2002 has described self-efficacy as what I believe I can do with my skills under certain conditions. Self-efficacy beliefs determine how people feel, think, motivate themselves and behave. Such beliefs produce these diverse effects through four major processes. These include cognitive, motivational, affective and selection processes. So, in self-efficacy, we have role of cognitive processes like thinking, reasoning, problem solving, motivational factors, 
emotional factors. Emotional factors for example, at the time of positive emotions, we may have higher level of self-efficacy. On the other hand, when we have lower level of emotions or negative emotions, then our self-efficacy may suffer and selection processes are important in this direction. Self-efficacy theory also maintains that these efficacy beliefs play a crucial role in psychological adjustment, in psychological problems and physical health as well as professionally guided and self-guided behavioral changes strategies. That is why self-efficacy is very important because if you have high level of self-efficacy, then you will perform better during psychotherapies, during intervention programs or during some skills and training programs. Self-efficacy is not a perceived skill. It is what I believe I can do with my skills under certain conditions. Self-efficacy is concerned not with what I believe I will do, but with what I believe I can do. So, here not only a simple statement I will do, but it is I can do. So, that is your, your efficacy to do the task. Self-efficacy beliefs are not causal attributes, intentions, self-esteem, motive, drive or need, control outcome expectancies or personality traits. So, it has its unique definition as well as understanding. Now, next point is self-efficacy is a learned human pattern of thinking rather than a genetically endowed one. And that is why psychologists are taking more interest because that is learned behavior that can be learned. That is why it is important for us for two reasons. One, it has positive impact in our life, in uh, on our health, on our performance as well as positive impact on our quality of life. And second one is it is learned behavior. And that is why through training, through uh, intervention programs, it can be enhanced. It begins in infancy and continues throughout the lifespan like uh, self-esteem. Self-efficacy is based on the evidence of social cognitive theory and this theory is talking about various factors. First, humans have powerful symbolizing capacities for cognitively creating models of their experiences. And second, by observing themselves in relation to these cognitive models, people then become skilled at self-regulating their actions as they navigate ongoing environmental events. Thus, cognitive reactions influence the surrounding environment force that in turn shapes su subsequent thoughts and actions. There is back and forth interchange of environmental and thinking processes. People and their personalities are a result of these situations specific. So, we have reciprocal interactions of thoughts, environment and then thoughts. So, it is a reciprocal interaction between thoughts and environmental factors. This model give us a little bit more information about this point that is called Bandura's triadic reciprocal determination. In this model, he has focused that there are three important factors, behavioral factors, personal factors and environmental factors and these all reciprocally interact with each other. He has borrowed this idea from Kurt Levin's uh, work where he has focused that our behavior is function of P and E. P means personal factors and E means environmental factors. So, behavior is a function of the person and environment. When I am saying person, it means personal characteristics characteristics which we have in our personality or can say intrapersonal character strengths, personality traits. On the other hand, environmental factors. So, these personal factors interact with environmental factors and finally, we have particular type of behavior. On the other hand, behavior is interacting with both factors, personal factors as well as environmental factors. So, these both category factors are important to have certain type of behavior. As a summary, let us know where does self-efficacy come from. As noted previously, self-efficacy is not a genetically endowed trait and it is not genetically determined factor. Instead, self-efficacy beliefs develop over time as I discussed earlier also. Uh, as per different stages, we learn this self-efficacy. The development of such belief begins, we assume in infancy 
and continues throughout life. Psychoanalysis and neo analyst Eric Erikson theory role of childhood experiences have been highlighted. Another important theory is social cognition theory, an approach to understanding human cognition, action, motivation and emotion that assumes that we are active shaper of rather than simply passive reactors to our environment. So, this theory says that our cognition, our action, motivation, emotion all these factors have active role in our life and that is why we are active shaper of our life rather we are passive in our environment and that is why role of feedback and biofeedback is very important and it has been observed that whenever we have clear cut feedback we have better self efficacy. There are five primary sources for efficacy beliefs as per Bandura's view or Bandura's theory. These five factors are first one is performance experiences. Our experience at attempting to control the environment is one of the most powerful sources of self efficacy information. Second one is the vicarious experiences observing others as they attempt to control their environment and the consequences of such behaviors. So, we learn through social modeling, we learn through others what kind of activities they are doing, what kind of work they are doing, how they have achieved their goals and by observing them we learn we would be having high level of self efficacy for that task or not. Next one is imaginal experiences. We can influence self efficacy beliefs by imagining ourselves or others behaving effectively or ineffectively in hypothetical situations. So, we imagine about the situation and then we just see whether we could do effectively or we could not do effectively. Next important process is or factor is verbal persuasion. Others can use words to persuade us about our self efficacy in a given situation. Importantly, we are told that the persuasiveness of the persons is influenced by his perceived expertness, his trustworthiness and his attractiveness as a source. Next point is physiological and emotional states. Being calm or excited, distressed or confident will undoubtedly have some impact on the self efficacy beliefs. So, these are the important factors which play important role and important sources these are. Let us understand same sources with examples. First is previous successes in similar situation. So, we just observe our feedback, what kind of feedback we had from previous situations. Calling on the source of positive thoughts about how well one has done in earlier circumstances. So, it means if we have been getting success or positive results then we will be more confident and high level of self efficacy we will be having. On the other hand uh, modeling on others in the same situation, watching other people who have succeeded in a given arena and coping their actions. So, modeling social modeling it has significant role. Third one is imagining oneself behaving effectively, visualizing acting effectively to secure a wanted goal. Fourth one is undergoing verbal persuasion by powerful trustworthy expert and attractive other people, being influenced by a helper's words to behave in a given manner. For instance, Jamvat makes Hanuman realize his immense capabilities and increases him to fly across the ocean. So, in this theory important factors are what kind of experience you had in the given situations or in the past situations and this past feedback has significant role for self efficacy. Second one is the modeling, social modeling, what kind of models you have perceived, what is your view about those models. Third one is how do you imagine what are your imaginations about the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of task and another source is powerful people or significant social agents in your life, 
powerful, trustworthy experts who could pursue, who could help you to pursue the task. So, all those sources are important to understand self-efficacy theory. So, for self-efficacy judgments, we have uh, these four factors which I discussed in the last two slides. Performance outcome, past experience is important, physiological feedback, emotional status impo very important source over there, uh, vicarious experiences modeling by others was important, verbal persuasion, coaching or feedback or maybe sometime you get certain trainings and through trainings you are learning about self-efficacy or having higher level of self-efficacy. These are important factors. When we talk about processes of goal realization, then can say self-evaluation, self-observation, self-efficacy, self-reactions, all these selves play role for goal attainment and motivation. Another important point here is why is self-efficacy is important? There are various researches which are supporting that if we have high level of self-efficacy, it has positive impact on our well-being as well as on various other positive personality traits. Self-efficacy is very important because it has a direct impact on psychological adjustment, being in control of our behavior, our environment our thoughts and feelings is essential for happiness and sense of well-being. It has been observed that it has various positive impacts. Low self-efficacy on the other hand, expectancies are an important feature of depression. It has been observed that if you have low self-efficacy, then chances to have higher level of depression. Self-efficacy plays a powerful role in attempts to overcome substance abuse problems and eating uh, disorders. So, if you have high level of self-efficacy, then you could deal negativity in your life more effectively. Self-efficacy and physical health are positively correlated. Self-efficacy and self-regulation again positively correlated with each other. Social cognitive theory and self-efficacy theory assume that we have the capacity for self-regulation and self-initiated change and studies of people who have overcome difficulty, behavioral problems without professional help provide compelling evidence for this capacity. So, if you have high level of uh, self-efficacy, self-regulation, then you could deal problems of your life. I think on the basis of our studies, we can say it may have very significant role in intervention programs also. A strong sense of efficacy enhances human accomplishment and personal well-being in many ways. There are various studies saying that it has a quite positive impact on our various aspects of life. For example, to be mastered rather than as threatens to be avoided, fosters intrinsic interest and deep engrossment in activities maintain strong commitment, uh, heightened and sustain their efforts in the face of failure, quickly recover their sense of efficacy after failure or setbacks, effective outcomes produces personal accomplishments, reduces stress and lower vulnerability to depression. So, these are the positive aspects of self-efficacy. On the other hand, when we have low level of self-efficacy, people who doubt their capabilities or have low self-efficacy, then they have various problems like shy away from difficult tasks which they view as personal threats, low aspirations and weak commitments to the task or to the goals they have, focus on all kinds of adverse outcomes rather than concentrate on how to perform successfully, give up quickly in the face of difficulties easy victim to stress and depression and that is why we prefer to have high level of self esteem and we want to have some trainings, intervention programs where we can promote high level of self efficacy in children as well as in adult. Self regulation depends on three in interacting components, goals or standards of performance self-evaluation reaction to performance and self-efficacy beliefs and these are connected with self-efficacy. Self-efficacy and psychotherapy, it has been observed that if you have high score on self-efficacy, then more effective psychotherapies we have. The uh, phrase seeing is believing, 
underscores the importance of providing people with noticeable evidence of their success. Hence, self-efficacy theory maintains that these efficacy beliefs play a crucial role in psychological adjustment, psychological problems and physical health as well as professionally guided and self-guided behavioral changes strategies. And that is why again and again we try to foster or we recommend to foster self-efficacy. Sometime we talk about collective efficacy also. Collective efficacy we can say a group of people who are sharing high level of self-efficacy. Group shares belief in its conjoint capabilities to organize and execute the courses of action required to produce given level of attainments. Such kind of groups could help to have social and political changes. Researchers are also trying to understand the origins of collective self-efficacy where they could discuss or can promote social and political changes. Now next point is psychotherapy may use one or more of the following five strategies to increase someone's uh, self-efficacy level. First strategy is building successes. Often through the use of goal setting and the incremental meeting of those goals. Second is using models to teach the person to overcome difficulties and through social modeling one, one could learn how he could sort out or how he could solve different problems. Third is allowing the person to imagine himself or herself behaving effectively. Fourth strategy is using verbal persuasion by a trustworthy psychotherapist. And fifth one, teaching techniques for lowering arousal to increase the likelihood of more adaptive self-efficacy thinking. I will discuss this phenomena once again in flow chapter. It has been observed that if we have very high arousal level, then we may chalk under pressure and that is why our performance may deteriorate. So, for lowering this arousal level, we recommend in some strategies like meditation, mindfulness, biofeedback, hypnotism, relaxation or certain other intervention techniques through which we could lower this arousal level and after lowering it, we may have high level of self-efficacy or better performance. As I mentioned, uh, if it is too high, then we may chalk under pressure and our performance may hamper because of this too high arousal level. Looking at the importance of these intrapersonal character strengths, Luthans has proposed psychological capital. Luthans and his associates have identified four factors. Number one, having confidence to take on and put in the necessary effort to succeed at challenging tasks that is self-efficacy. Second factor is optimism, making a positive attribution about succeeding now in the future. Third one is hope, persevering towards goals and when necessary redirecting paths to goals in order to succeed. Fourth factor is resilience. When beset by problems and adversity, sustaining and bouncing back and even beyond to attain success. So, these four factors are very important and these factors as by uh, you know Luthans and his associates have been identified psychological capital and highlighted a lot in organization sector. One more concept related to self that is self-regulation. Self-regulation refers to the capacity to moderate the thoughts and emotions that govern human behavior. So, we have capacity to moderate our thoughts as well as emotions which is called self-regulation. Given the extent to which emergent desires could influence behavior, self-regulation suggests that uh, individuals consciously attempt to control behavior in an effort to mediate outcomes. So, we are active shaper of our life, not passive one. Self-regulation has direct linkage to motivation. The motivation to achieve success is presumably linked to self-discipline and adherence to the strategies that promote goal achievement. For understanding self-regulation a little bit more, let us discuss about three general aspects. Standards, value-driven expectations, motivation, adherence to standards 
and will power impulse control. These are primary determinants of self regulations. If we discuss all these three in terms of academic learning, then these are as follows. Self regulation of behavior involves the active control of resources that are available to students such as their time, their study environment, who they study with, their use of academic support like faculty, tutors, etc. So, self regulation of behavior by actively using those resources which are available over there. Second one is self regulation of motivation and affect. It involves controlling and changing motivational belief such as self efficacy and goal orientation so that students can adapt to the demands of the course. In addition, students can learn to control their emotions and affect in ways that improve their learning. So, role of motivation and emotions, how we can support with our motivation as well as positive emotions our learning so that we could regulate better to our study and have better marks. Third one is self regulation of cognition. It involves the control of various cognitive strategies for learning such as the use of deep processing strategies that result in better learning and performance than students showed previously. So, through this uh, self regulation of cognition or uh, through some cognitive strategies for learning by using our thinking, reasoning, problem solving and other mental processes, we could have some better plans, some better self regulating plans. So, it means when we talk about self regulation, there are three major factors or uh, uh, processing factors are there. Number one, self regulation of behavior, how you could have in better direction, self regulation of cognition and self regulation of motivation and affect. So, broadly this self regulation theory is focusing on our behavior, our cognition, motivation and affect in positive direction or how it could regulate our behavior and have better direction or better results in our life. After knowing all these concepts positive self, self esteem, uh, self efficacy, self regulation, let us know what is the role of all these factors in coping processes. When we talk about coping processes as Holahan model described uh, which is uh, proposed in 1996 described two main factors environmental system and personal system. When we say environmental system, it means life stresses and social resources. So, so, resources as well as stresses from our surrounding. On the other hand, when we discuss about uh, personal system, demographic factors as well as personal factors are important. Personal factors means hope, optimism, positive emotions, happiness, maybe uh, positive self self efficacy, self esteem, self regulation all these factors have significant role in our life and these lead to life crisis and transitions event related factors and then we have cognitive appraisal and coping processes. So, during cognitive appraisal again role of self esteem, self efficacy, self regulation and other positive personality traits and then all these factors contribute to our health and well being. And that is why we positive psychology emphasized on all those factors which have positive impact on health and well being. I would like to conclude this class with this assignment. Learn ways to improve your positive self, self esteem, self efficacy and self regulation and practice them at least during this course. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.